My name is Naima Muhammad, and I live in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I'm a member and community organizer for the North Carolina Environmental Justice Network and the Black Workers for Justice. And on Saturday, June the 16th, I participated in a detoxic tour in Brazil, which took us to Santa Cruz, a community called Santa Cruz. And this community is living with a steel company um, that has really moved into the community and just created some really serious health problems for the community. Uh, the steel company is producing steel that's shipped to Alabama, USA, and to China, I believe they say it. And the steel is used to make automobiles, used on automobiles. Uh, and the problem for the community is the company moved in about three years ago, and the, the residuals from the plant that sit, that's sitting right in the community uh, wind up coming into people's homes. Uh, it's like these fine particles that look like um, dirt. But when you look at the dirt, it's fine like sand, but it has silvery pieces. You can see the silver from the metal that's traveling from the plant over to the community. It gets into people's homes and it's covering everything in the home. And the community reported about it covering their roofs and it's also getting embedded into their skin. And several people showed me how it's embedded into their skin and it looks like they have rashes, but it's the metal that's embedded into the skin looking like rashes. Also, um, they reported that many people are now having re upper respiratory problems as well as consistent, uh, continuous eye running and nosebleeds. Um, but the first thing about the tour that struck me was when you get to the, when you enter into the community, the first thing we came to was a bridge, and at this particular bridge, um, they have guards. They have guards stationed out at the bridge that prevent the community from. They've taken a public highway and made it made it a private highway, and they have guards stationed out there to prevent the community members from being able to use this highway and in order for them to leave their community they have to take the long way out. They can only travel on this what used to be their street. They can only travel on this street now by either by motorcycle or walking. The guards prevent them from driving their cars to get in and out of the community. But when I saw that it reminded me of of all this stuff we hear about what is what Israel is doing to the Palestinian people and it made me think about the Gaza Strip that people have now become prisoners in their own community they can no longer use a public street because this company has come in and made it a private street and stationed guards out there to ensure that the people don't can no longer use this street as a public entry and exit out of their community and when I saw this I just, it pissed me off and I said you know it really is criminal behavior on the behalf of this company and and I also told them that if it was my community I would be encouraging everybody in my community to get in their cars and go down that street anyway if the guards don't move run them over you know but do not allow this to happen, I think it's criminal behavior on the parts of this company, and I think that it is a great injustice to this community that a company could be allowed to do this to you. Uh, as well as, it also reminded me that when I saw this, I said, you know, these companies have the same behavior wherever you find them. They always come in and cite themselves in the poorest communities and we, we call those the avenues of least resistance because they perceive people don't have the political clout or the economic power to fight them. 
and so they're able to get away with what they're doing. And as a community organizer, I'm always encouraging people, oh, they might have the power right now, but they only have it for as long as we allow them to have it. And we can take it back, but it's going to take community organizing, everybody working together, not just that community. I'm going back to North Carolina, and I'm going to continue to be looking and searching for ways that we can reach out to this community to see if there's something we can do to aid this community with this struggle because I see it as a grave injustice and I don't think I can walk away and not never look this way again.